Hello, and welcome to this lesson on the Interactive Brokers Client Portal API. In this tutorial, we will be covering how to configure the Client Portal Gateway, how to authenticate on the Gateway, and how to confirm your authentication status. To begin, let's go to the Client Portal API documentation at interactivebrokers.github.io forward slash cp web API. The documentation provides all the information you'll need to start using the Client Portal API. Please note that you will need to have an open and funded Interactive Brokers account to be able to connect through the Client Portal API. To begin, let's first navigate to the Client Portal documentation site and click on the Quick Start tab on the left. Then, on the top right of the Quick Start page, you should see the API Gateway and Java Download Panel for downloading the Gateway software in Java Installer. The Gateway is a Java-based program that requires a JRE, or Java Runtime Environment, running on your machine. To check if you already have a JRE running, please open a command prompt and type the command Java space and then a hyphen and the word version. If you received, Java is not recognized as an internal or external command, please download and install the Java on your machine following the Java download link. Otherwise, it should return the details of the Java and JRE version, and you are ready to download, extract, and run the gateway. By default, the Client Portal Gateway's zip file will download to your user's downloads folder. Once you have everything downloaded and installed, it is time to run the gateway and get authenticated. First, open a command prompt terminal and navigate to the directory that you extracted the clientportal.gw folder from step 2. To do this, use the command cd and then a space, and then to that directory, you'll put a backslash clientportal.gw. Once you are inside the directory, run the command bin backslash, then the word run dot bat, and then a space, followed by the word root, and then another backslash, and then the word conf dot yaml for Windows, or bin forward slash run dot sh, and a space, root forward slash conf dot yaml for unix users keep in mind to leave this window open while using the client portal gateway after the new window has been opened the gateway should be up and running and it's ready to authenticate the user's session let's open a browser and navigate to https colon forward slash slash localhost colon 5000 on your local network then log in with your live or paper account credentials. Please note that you cannot be logged into your account that you are already authenticating with elsewhere before you authenticate in the client portal gateway. You should make sure to log out of the account before attempting to authenticate by using the logout option on our other platforms. Just closing the window or application may cause a stale session that could prevent the authentication from working properly, so using the logout option is important. If the authentication is successful, a new page will load with the message, Client Login Succeeds. If the page reloads back to the login page, simply log in once again. For any questions you may have regarding authentication, please visit our authentication page in our documentation as your question may have already been answered. A few important questions to highlight are, how long does a session remain authenticated? And how can I prevent this session from timing out? The gateway comes with a default certificate. This will likely present an insecure server message when navigating to the localhost page and making a request to your localhost. It is important to note that the insecure connection is between you and your localhost or the connection on the same machine. The connection between the local host and interactive brokers will remain secure. 
However, you may replace our default certificate with your own self-signed certificate or public certificate. To update the gateway certificate, replace the default certificate with your own under the gateway directory backslash root and modify the SSL cert and SSL PWD fields in the conf.yaml file. And if your gateway was already running, be sure to restart the program. Now, let's start writing a simple program to confirm our authentication status. This can be called at any point to confirm authentication status on your machine. I will start by creating a new Python program and importing a few modules. We can do this by writing import and then the word requests. I will also import a library called urllib3. This library gives us access to a method to disable SSL errors while using the default certificate. This is not required and is used purely for aesthetics. With this, I will write a quick call for urllib3.disable underscore warnings and then in parentheses urllib3.exceptions dot insecure request warning. I will create a confirm status method that contains no arguments. For the moment, I will only put pass in this method. Afterwards, I will create the Python name main idiom to automatically run our method if this is the primary file and reference our confirm status method. With our framework complete, we can return to our confirm status method to call the endpoint. I will begin with a variable base underscore URL and set it equal to HTTPS colon forward slash slash localhost colon 5000 forward slash V1 forward slash API and end it with another forward slash. This is the standard base URL for all requests in the client portal API. Now, I will create a variable called endpoint, which I will set equal to iServer forward slash auth forward slash status. Next, we can build the request. To do this, I will call my variable auth underscore rec and set it equal to request dot get and then in parentheses set URL equal to base URL plus endpoint. Then I will set the term verify equal to false. This will create an HTTP GET request with a target URL of our combined base URL and endpoint. I had also set the verify parameter to false so that way we do not need to require an SSL verification on our request. Finally, I will print the auth rec variable as well as auth underscore rec .text. This will print both the response message as well as the response body. Now we can run the code. If we take a look at our response in the terminal, I can see we received response 200, indicating an OK response. This indicates a successful request. Below that, we could see our body indicating our authentication and connected status. While there are more values returned, most of these are inconsequential. If we see connected equal to false, there may be an issue with the gateway and you may wish to relaunch your application. If we see authenticated to false, your brokerage session is not authenticated. This can mean that either a stale session has prevented your login or you have recently logged in elsewhere, such as the trader workstation. This can end your client portal session. Given our authenticated and connected status are showing true, that means we are fully authenticated and connected and are now ready to send additional queries for market data or order placements. Thank you for watching this lesson on configuring the client portal gateway in the client portal web API. If you find this lesson helpful, Please check out our other lessons in the Client Portal API tutorial series.